Hello everybody and welcome back to another short video, this one about delivering rovers to other planets. The first thing I wanted to show you is the cargo dock. Here it is and it has just delivered a new rover to Duna. Okay, while the dog is heading back up into orbit, yeah, look at its little legs wobble around in the atmosphere. Okay, here is the rover, it's called the Conqueror. And, well, it's pretty much self-sustainable. It has, as you can see, some resource capabilities. It has big fuel cells and, of course, a fuel tank. And it has an interior with a lot of science equipment and an airlock. Well, sort of an airlock. It's just one of those small service bays. Okay, let's repair that wheel. You can see the suspension under there. You can see the tank and the fuel cells. It has, of course, some resource uh, collectors, well, refineries, rather. And, yeah, well, that's pretty much it. And it weighs quite some tons, but it handles okay, I guess. And that's also thanks to the reaction wheels. Okay, this other thing here is sort of a variant on the cargo dog, or rather, if you remember, my Duna rover dropship that I did a few uh, weeks back. This one's now trying to land on Val. Well, it's not trying to land. The same as the cargo dog, this thing does not have any landing gear. And we're dropping Valentina. Hey Val. Val on Val. <laughs> Would you look at that? Okay, Val is now trying to get to the rover. The rover is called the Endurance because it also has resource collecting capabilities. It has a full science array and, well, it can go pretty much anywhere on a planet as long as there are resources. So this thing here can actually, well, explore an entire planet if you want to. Okay. Uh yeah, well, you can't do any much exploring if you're rolling around all the time. Okay, let's show you some of the tricks this thing can do. Up front we have the resource scanner, so we can see if it's okay to drill. Then we're going to drill. And here's the fuel cell, fuel cell and some resource tanks. Yeah, and you can perform the science experiments all the time you pretty much want. Okay, now we're trying to get some fuel. There we go. And we're firing our engines. Yes, this thing has twin engines, so it can go around the surface really, really fast. And we all know how safe that is, don't we? Yep, pretty much like that. Okay, you may remember my big rover that landed on Duna, I called the Leviathan, that also had a small rover inside. Well, this is sort of the concept for a big ass ship that has a big rover inside. And I called it the Leviathan Evolved. And the idea was, well, since the cargo bays aren't big enough to hold that rover, I built something out of wings. And now it's time to get it out. So in order to get the rover out, I have to tilt the entire ship. And then I'm not getting out at all. Okay. Well, obvious design flaw here. Um, okay. Well, thanks for safe games. Okay, let's try that again. Move out, just going to have to tilt the ship a little bit more forward. Okay, we're now stuck on the docking port up front, well, up top rather. Almost out now. Let's put that ship back in a horizontal position. And yes, now the rover has cleared the ship. Perfect. 
this rover does not have any peculiar name, it's just the Leviathan Evolved Rover. You can see the docking ports, those were used to anchor it to the ship. You can see the solar panels and the communications array, and you can see the big ship with the big solar arrays and the big drills. So this can gather, gather some more resources and then get back up into orbit. Okay, so we can transfer our kerbals around. We have the main hatch in the back. You can see the suspension. And down here we have our science equipment tucked away neatly in the bay. Okay, that's it for the Leviathan Evolved. This one is the Utterly Pointless. And yeah, this thing is based mainly on looks and not on functionality. You can see me now rolling out the nacelles. So the engines are on some Infernal Robotics docking washers. And yeah, as expected, they wobble around a bit. But that can be remedied by, well, just moving on and thrusting away. Okay, this thing here has a few thousand delta V. And we're now trying to see what we can do with it. For instance, trying to land on the moon. Of course, you can't land it that way, so you have to tilt it around. There we go. Don't crash it. We have some radial engines attached. Okay. Trying to land here. Don't mess this up. I said don't mess this up. Hmm. Let's see, maybe we can use those nacelles. No, that doesn't work. Okay, let's use the landing gear. Perfect. A mighty fine landing, I might add. Okay, back inside we have another rover in another cargo bay. So how can we get this thing down there? So I once again used Infernal Robotics to make this kind of cargo lift. Okay, and here is the tiny rover, well, that has a lot of science equipment. Uh, besides the Science Junior or Science 9000 Junior, it does have every experiment you can imagine. And it handles like, well, a little tiny toy car. Okay, heading back inside. So we're now back on the platform. Let's get Valentina back into the cargo bay. And boom, there we go. Looks cool, but entirely pointless. And especially if you leave the cargo seat, you're now up top of that vehicle. And you can't enter again really good, so you have to transfer the pilot to the inside crew chamber. And then you have to enter the pilot's den. Okay, well, it does work, but as I said, entirely pointless but at least it is actually a working vehicle that you can get to Duna and other places okay moving on we're now having here the Eve trike well you might wonder where is the trike well it's right here boom this little flyer is designed to land on EVE, it has a small rocket engine and there is the track and you should glide to the surface and then extract the rover. It also has every science equipment you can imagine, it has the science bay, it has the atmospheric sensor, the pressure sensor, the temperature sensor and so on and it can transport three kerbals. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching, goodbye. Thank you.